Hello, and welcome to this edition of The List on UWW-TV. I'm Mason Miller, alongside Adiri Morgan Thompson. For the next few minutes, we'll present our top five sports stories of the week and discuss why they made the top five. Did your top five make our list? Let's find out. At number five, the Stout Blue Devils defeated our Warhawks this Saturday. The Whitewater football team was playing in the Menominee when they were bested by UW Stout 27-29. This comes a week after their one possession victory against Oshkosh. With this being a conference loss, how do you see this affecting Whitewater's standing? You know, quite frankly, this is a terrible loss, right? Whitewater has not lost a stout since 2001, right? That was wow. before you were born, before I was born, before Kanye dropped the college dropout. Quite frankly, that's abysmal. And the reason for this is because they turned over the ball entirely too much. The story of the year has been the passing game has been suspect. This can remain to be true, as the quarterback had two interceptions, right? As a team, we had a fumble, and on top of that, our rushing game could not do anything at all. Samir Thomas only having 42 yards, no touchdowns, right? And this is a big reason why we lost. It was kind of a shootout in a way, and we lost a shootout. We got shot too many times, and we couldn't recover. Yeah, it's incredibly unfortunate for us, and almost bittersweet for our quarterback, Sinetti, because one could argue that this was his best game of the season. He was able to go for 281 yards through the air and two touchdowns, but as has been the case with every other game this season, the turnovers are killing us. And as you mentioned, we couldn't get our legs going. But on the other hand, they got their legs going entirely. Their quarterback ran for 83 yards and two touchdowns, and that ultimately killed us. Hopefully we can turn it around moving forward. As we move on to number four, the WNBA Finals are underway. The New York Liberty defeated the defending champion Aces, while the Minnesota Lynx beat the Connecticut Sun on their way to the Finals. The Liberty split the series after an 80 to 66 victory over the Lynx. So, with everything on the line, who do you see walking away as the champion? You know, after the Liberty lost last year to the Aces, I think this year is this year, right? This year is their year, excuse me. We have Brianna Stewart, right, who is one of the most dominating base in WNBA history. And you pair her with one of the best young guards in the league with Sabrina Ayuski. And quite frankly, it makes an overwhelming duo for the Lynx to battle. The Lynx have Nafisa Collier, they have Courtney Williams, but they don't have enough to overcome this Liberty team. The Liberty team is going to win this championship, and I think, you know, you can, you can write it up, you can chalk it up right now. Yeah, it's definitely going to be tough for the Lynx going up against a team that just went back, that this is their back-to-back -back year making the finals. The New York Liberty are stacked. That's just the fact of the matter. Brianna Stewart is out there showing you that age ain't nothing but a number. Shout out R. Kelly. Um, she's going out there going crazy. Sabrina is doing Sabrina things. And then Jaquil Johnson is going crazy as well. Nafisa Collier is arguably one of the best players in the WNBA. In my opinion, she is number two. But the Lynx are going behind too much and relying on New York to blow big leads. And at the end of the day, that is not winning basketball. So I would not be surprised if New York is able to pull out this win and go ahead and redeem themselves from last year and get their championship. You know, 100%. I do think the Liberty have this in the box, in the bag. Yep. At number three, the NBA season tip-off is just around the corner. Carl Anthony Towns and the New York Knicks will begin their tenure together with a matchup against the defending champs, the Boston Celtics. Additionally, Cat's old team, the Timberwolves, will face off against the Lakers' father-son duo. So, of these teams, who do you see starting off the season with a win? You know, the Knicks with Carl Anthony Towns is a very good idea. It's a very mm -hmm. good concept. However, the Celtics is not an idea. It's not a concept. It's a proven fact. They're the most dominant team in the NBA, and that's going to continue in game one next Tuesday, right? The Celtics are going to smack the New York Knicks. The Knicks are nice, right? They have OG Ananova. They have Mikhail Bridges. They have Jalen Branson. They have Carl Anthony Towns, right? That's cool, but the Celtics have Drew Holiday. They have Derek White. They have Jalen Brown. They have Jason Tendon. They have Kristaps Porzingis. That's the most dominant starting five we've seen since the Golden State Warriors in 2018, 2019. And quite frankly, the Knicks can't keep up with that. On the other side of things, the Lakers, you know, the father-son duo, that's Fugazi, right? This is LeBron and AD's team. Stop talking about Bronny. Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, Julius Randle, and the Timberwolves are going to be an interesting team. But I think the Lakers have more proven chemistry and that they're going to be able to get the win in day one. Overall, the Timberwolves will probably be a better team, but I do believe that the Lakers have it you know, on top of week one. How do you feel about that, Mason? Like you said, the Celtics are a proven team. The Knicks have concepts of a plan, and that plan was to add Carl Anthony Towns to match up better with the Celtics, 
but I think I'm in agreement with you on pretty much both picks. The Knicks just probably still need to gel a little bit more. Well, I do believe that should be a fun and exciting game. I probably have the Celtics there. And on the other hand, the Timberwolves versus the Lakers, that's going to be a lot closer of one. And I feel like that could really go either way. I'm excited to see what Anthony Edwards can do to continue building on his ascendance from last year. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Lakers take that one away. But Bronny, get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. Well, we've got more coming up on the list, including the MLB playoffs and NFL trades. We'll be right back here on UWWTV. Have you heard of UROF? We're part of Whitewater and our own thing. Come on, we'll show you. I learned how to be a college student here, and now I'm headed off to Madison to study global health, and I know I'm ready. People like me who aren't a fan of big crowds would really like UROF because it's welcoming and it's laid back. My advisor helped me figure out my schedule, organize my time, fill out my FAFSA, and figure out what classes I liked and how to turn that into a major. And if I had to do it again, I would choose you rock. You ready to rock? You belong here. You know, for Hawk Talk, you know, I mean, especially on days I'm hosting, uh, you really need to be up early looking at those news stories. Even the night before, I've been finding topics that I can incorporate in the show, and I feel like we get a conversation going. Once you get the opportunity to do that with other people who appreciate it the same level as you do, it makes it that much more enjoyable. For everything sports, tune in Monday through Thursday at 91.7 The Edge, or watch us on UWW-TV. Your home for excellence in action. The WIAC Network. Watch and download here. It's always been there. His love of the outdoors. Some days, you wonder if it might be his calling. Truth is, you know that the things he's passionate about today will build the foundation of what he does tomorrow and possibly inspire a new journey. All he needs now is a way to make it happen. We are the universities of Wisconsin. 13 universities, unlimited opportunity. Welcome back to the list on UWW-TV. Let's continue the countdown to this week's top sports stories. At number two, the MLB playoffs have moved on to the next round. The American and National League Championship round matchups are locked in as the Mets will take on the Dodgers and the Yankees will face the Guardians. With three of the bigger markets remaining, what's your World Series prediction? You know, just quite frankly, I think spending that money is starting to pay off, right? Mm -hmm. The LA Otanis. They spent that bag and they're getting that reward. The Dodgers are definitely going to the World Series. On the other side, however, I tend to pick the underdog. So, I'm going for them Guardians. How do you feel about that, Mason? You know, also, also to add one more thing. No purring and meowing this week as your Tigers got knocked off the map. I'm happy to hear that. We don't appreciate bandwagons over here, Mason. Look, man, uh, off the rip, I just... Uh, I'd be a bad fan if I didn't address the fact that the Guardians, we are going to be looking into that. They might have been cheating because there's no way they beat my Detroit Tigers like that. But that's neither here nor there. Looking at who the World Series is probably going to be, in my opinion and in the opinion of many others, it's probably going to be the boring answer with Dodgers versus Yankees. But you do have to look to see that the Brewers curse is still kind of alive. I mean, the Mets just are keeping the series close. And it's still incredibly possible for them to make it. Maybe it could end up being the Battle of New York. As for the Guardians, I'm not sure that they're going to be able to do it. But it is nice to see some of the smaller market teams still trying to battle it out with the bigger ones. But it is going to be tough. Yeah, you know, 100%. Just happy not hearing no meowing this week. <sighs> All right. Catch me next year. But moving on to number one on our list, the long-awaited trade has finally happened. Devontae Adams is now a New York Jet. However, he's not the only receiver changing teams, as Amari Cooper has been traded back to the Bills. After adding these new weapons, what is your outlook on these teams? 
who won their trade the most? You know, let's just, let's just be, let's be frank here, right? The Jets still aren't going to do anything, right? Mm. The Jets have a lot bigger problems in their wide receiver room. They have one of the best young wide receivers in the league, Garrett Wilson, and him and Aaron Rodgers can't get a connection. Having Devontae Adams, who has a connection with them, is great. But at the end of the day, their offensive line still can't do anything. Tyron Smith is out there looking like me. He can't block anything. He's quite frankly terrible. The Bills, however, they made a very smart move. The Bills are a very good team. They have a very good defense. They have a very good offense. And they added one of the best route runners in the league. And they gave, you know, Josh Allen probably the second best receiver he's ever played with in his career. And quite mm-hmm. frankly, I think the Bills and Amari Cooper are going to go way farther than the Jets could even dream of. Look, man, here's the thing. Getting back with your ex never truly works out how you think. Like, it looks cool. It's real pretty. You start thinking about the old times. Oh, I remember all the balls I used to be able to catch. Pause. As the, if you're Devontae Adams. Oh, I remember having a good wide receiver like that. But there's a reason it didn't work out. I get it. Aaron Rodgers is trying to build the Green Bay New York Jets. But I don't see them going far. On the other hand, we have Josh Allen, who's already, at worst, the third best quarterback in the league. Getting a true number one wide receiver in that wide receiver room once again. It's going to help them go far. They were already projected to go far, but with the addition of Amari Cooper, this could be the next step that they need on their trail to the Super Bowl. But at the end of the day, listen, anybody out there, fellas, ladies, if Aaron Rodgers can get his ex back, maybe you can too. Anyways, though, that was our top five, and that will do it for this edition of The List. We'll be back next week to talk up the latest sports headlines. For Nadiri Morgan Thompson and the members of the UWWTV crew, I'm Mason Miller. See you then.